No coffee creamer, too hot. Not great this coffee. I'm gonna build my own espresso machine. A traditional manual espresso machine is not as complicated as you might think it is. Three main components, that's it. The group pad that extracts the coffee is the heart and soul of the machine. And the most famous and arguably still the best is the E61 group. It's a classic in Italian machines. It originated in 1961 in the Faema E61. The hard part is to find an affordable E61 group. I went on eBay and searched for espresso machines not working, for parts only. You might want to make sure that it doesn't say free local pickup. Well, I didn't. So me and my son took a little road trip to New Jersey. Well, at least it wasn't somewhere in California or Hawaii. Since we already took a 13 hour trip to New Jersey, I bought a second coffee machine up here. I guess it's just common practice to roll things into carpets around New Jersey. It's probably best not to ask too many questions. After a little sightseeing in New York City and some great pizza from Joe's, back to South Carolina with a truck full of coffee machines. Uh, a truck full of coffee machine parts. The good thing about the E61 group pad is that you can't hardly break it and it's fairly easy to rebuild. After taking everything apart, I put some of the components into some descaling acid. You just have to be careful of the chrome parts. I had a heck of a time getting the old gaskets out. I pretty much had to burn them off. You can buy complete rebuilt kits or just the single gaskets you need. I bought this kit on eBay that had all the components just in case something would break but there must be different versions of V61 groups because the camshaft that came with this one did not work for mine. One of the biggest benefits of the E61 group is that it constantly circulates hot water through the head. That way it keeps the group at optimal temperature at all times. That's why with these plastic groups, this one comes out of an automatic coffee machine. You'll never be able to get the same espresso quality as with a manual E61 group, simply because you can't preheat this group. There's other reasons, of course. The next key component is the boiler. There are basically three different boilers available. A single boiler, heat exchanger or dual boiler. If you make a lot of cappuccinos, you need steam to froth the milk, so you should go for at least a heat exchange, better a dual boiler. That way you have two heated boilers at all time, one for brewing water and one for steam. Personally, I'm not a fan of any pressurized vessels. Then you need a pressure relief valve, a water fill electronic, just makes things more complicated. I like these milk frothers. Always the same temperature and always the same consistency. Now before I install the heating element, I want to make sure that it works and doesn't have a short to ground. That's why you want to hook up the ground and test it in water because there could be a hole in the heating element. I bought this fire resistant fiber mat and would you believe it, it's fire resistant. For the outside layer, I'm using a Teflon sheet so that it is nicely tucked in. Cheaper espresso machines have a thermostat very similar to the temperature control you have in your house. The thermostat has a hysteresis of maybe 2 degrees, so your temperature is constantly over or under the actual set point. Consistent temperature is very important for great coffee quality. That's why more expensive espresso machines use a PID controller, which stands for Proportional, Integral and Derivative. Fancy words, but all you need to know is that PID controls are found on most process controls that require accuracy. For example, accurate speed or position controls like robots. If you're old enough, you might remember the McDonald's coffee lawsuit in the 90s. An 81-year-old woman has been awarded $2.9 million after she sued McDonald's, claiming their coffee was too hot. That's all about the time they opened up their first McCoffee, so McDonald's did their own research to find the perfect brewing temperature that gives you that great aroma without the third-degree burns. All in the name of science, of course. Coffee, please. Ready? 
still too hot. The last main component is the pump. Vibratory pumps work similar to the old-fashioned doorbell like I have here, except it has a piston instead of the hammer. Most of the cheaper espresso machines have vibration pumps, but they cannot deliver the same consistent pressure a rotational pump can. And therefore, I will replace this vibration pump with a rotary pump I bought used off of eBay, including delivery. the pump, I will use this food grade grease. 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 Look, this fancy boy has even a pressure graph. Something for everyone. It all depends if you want to bring out the Italian in you. Or you want to wake up the scientist in you. Can't really enjoy it. Always tweaking. Make it a little better. I'm glad this coffee machine already came with some sort of frame so I didn't have to start building something from scratch. The steel frame just needed some cleanup and paint. For the front, I envision a backlit plexiglass. If you haven't seen how to make the plexiglass front and what not to do, here's the link for that video. I'm frosting the plexiglass with 320 and then 600 grit sandpaper. I first bought this individually addressable LED stripe, but if I need an oscilloscope to diagnose it, then there is no room for it in my coffee machine. I don't need no blinking disco lights, I just want to change between two colors. Old fashioned analog. Of course I forgot to write down the colors, have to take it apart again. Now I don't want the plexiglass to be exposed to the hot brewing head. That's why I'm using two paper gaskets and this one I'll make out of Teflon. Bought some nice legs from Amazon and I'm re-tapping all the screw threads. The problem was that I could still see through the plexiglass. So now I decided to paint the backside white. I found this drip tray online, but when I tried it out, it was hitting the front plate and I had to take another 5 millimeters off. Now the next problem was that the switch didn't make contact with the cam lever, so I had to find a longer micro switch. Now it's time to install these main components. Now I have to build a housing, and for that I'm gonna use good old extruded aluminum profile. When the water tank is empty, it is light enough to get pushed up by a spring, which will activate a switch, which will change the LED color in the front. So the theory, let's see if we can actually get that to work. Unfortunately, the boiler insulation was too thick to add side plates, so I had to cut it off and order a half inch mat instead. And now it's time to wire this puppy up. To protect the wiring from the heat of the boiler, I used this fiberglass heat shield. I also bought a new temperature switch. This one is just used as a safety protection in case the PID controller doesn't work anymore or the solid state relay is hung up or something like that. And I put in a Wi-Fi controller so that I can schedule the coffee machine to come on every morning at 6 a.m. because it does take 15 minutes to heat up that large boiler. But when it was time for the first test run, there was a leak. Typically brewing happens at around 9 bar, but you want to have a little bit of a safety factor, so I cranked it up to 14 bars, because if you don't have a leak at 14 bars, you know that you're good at 9 bars. Unfortunately, after fixing one leak, there was the next. I tried to make my own Teflon seals, but that didn't work either. Only after I sanded down this groove that is typically from over tightening, the leaking finally stopped. 
I can't hardly wait to make my first espresso with this. Now don't get me wrong, my espresso machine makes a pretty decent coffee. But look at all these empty capsules. So much trash. And you know, I drink a lot of coffee. A good thing I tried this first with cardboard, because otherwise I would have ruined that first sheet of carbon fiber already by drilling the holes in the wrong spot. I thought that carbon fiber would give it a manly look and go well with the plexiglass front. Now I just have to drill the holes for the water tank, give it a little polish and that should be it. Now this is exactly why you want to make sure to sand down those sharp edges. Cut my finger already, just from cleaning. I also changed the LED color for when the water is low to make it a little less dramatic. You're out of water! <laughs> it actually works like a charm. Now I did not have the budget for one of those fancy grinders, so I bought the cheapest single dose grinder I could find on Amazon for 130 bucks. And the coffee turned out pretty well, look for yourself! I used the water from my homemade water generator because there is a reason all the breweries are close to the water sources like up in the Colorado mountains or, or near the Bavarian Alps. Two ingredients, coffee, water, get the best quality. If you know how to get rid of channeling, then leave me a comment. And if you like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Here is that video for the fluoride free water generator. Thanks for watching. See you next time.